Vissels is back launching their latest keyboard over on Kickstarter, the ultra slim, low profile, clicky switch wielding LP85. I was a big fan of the V84 when we got our hands on that earlier this year and was excited to check out their latest build. This time, it's a low profile keyboard with clicky optical switches aimed primarily at Apple users with a reasonable price of just $99 for early bird backers. And there is also a version made for Windows, but the overall design mimics the Apple Magic keyboard. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the Vissels LP85. Thanks for watching 9 to 5 Toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9 to 5 Toys, and today we have the Vissels LP85. And while this keyboard still is in Kickstarter mode, uh, I was pretty fond of the V84 that we got to check out earlier this year, and this has some pretty interesting features to it as well. The MSRP is $140, with early bird pricing set at $99. So if this is something that strikes your fancy, make sure to back the project on Kickstarter to get that special pricing, and we'll have links down in the description for that. And the Kickstarter campaign does end at the end of November, so if this is something that you want to pick up, make sure you do that soon. These keyboards come in both Mac and Windows layouts and in either white or black keys. For the LP85, Vissels wanted to make something small and portable for those who still want a mechanical feel, but like a slimmer, low-profile keyboard, much like the Apple Magic Keyboard. Measuring at just over one half inch tall at the highest part, the LP85 is very low profile. It has a little bit of a taper, but doesn't keep the most standard slope angle that a lot of larger mechanical keyboards have. There are also no feet on the bottom of the keyboard to adjust the angle. To keep things small and slim, the LP85 is a 75% layout keyboard. This means that it foregoes the numpad found on full-size keyboards, but keeps all the function keys and navigation keys. On the front of the keyboard is a single toggle switch that will put the keyboard into either cable mode or Bluetooth mode, with a small LED status light and a USB-C port as well. This is also touts about how lightweight the keyboard is, but to me, it has a pretty decent bit of heft to it in the best way possible. It feels beefy. Made of aluminum with a 2000 milliamp hour internal battery, it weighs in at about 547 grams. And thanks to that metal body and weight, it feels very well built. Now I've only had this keyboard for a few weeks, but it feels like it's made to withstand the test of time. There is almost no flex in here, no play. It feels very solid. So the LP85 does come in both Mac and Windows layouts. And so what this was just trying to do here is to market this to Apple users who maybe, you know, want something with a mechanical tactile feel, but it's still very low profile. And uh, I guess I said tactile, but it does have these clicky switches, which are pretty audible on here. Compared to the Apple Magic Keyboard, the LP85 offers full-size arrow keys as well as additional navigation along the right side of the keyboard in the form of an insert, home, page up and page down, and end keys. Some of the other button layouts are a little unconventional, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The Vissels LP85 can connect to a device with a USB-C cable or Bluetooth, and it can be connected with up to three different Bluetooth devices simultaneously. To connect to a Bluetooth device, flip the switch on the back into Bluetooth mode, and then hit function and either Q, W, or E. These will be the three different keys that are tied to whichever device you pair. And then hold function and P for five seconds to enter the pairing mode, which is visible with the PT flashing white. Now before pairing the next device, be sure to hit function and W or function and E to ensure that you don't override the Bluetooth pairing with the original and current device mapped to Q. For switches, Vissels is doing something pretty unique. Instead of the standard membrane or mechanical switch, Vissels is using an optical switch in the LP85. Optical switches are usually better for speed and durability because they're using light instead of a you know physical mechanical contact to send the signal from the switch. And the switch is giving one of the biggest differences from the Apple keyboard. It is that clicky feel. So it is very tactile and also very audible. You might draw a little bit more attention at the coffee shop or at the office with this you know clicky, a little bit louder keyboard than you would with the Apple Magic Keyboard. But if you're looking for something that gives more tactile and audible feedback, uh, this keyboard definitely delivers on that front. In an ideal world, you know, Vissels would also offer a linear and tactile version of this without the click, uh, but for right now, the clicky switch is what we have. Rated at 50 grams of actuation force with a 1.2 millimeter pre-travel and 2.5 millimeter total travel, it's a pretty quick switch. For comparison, the more standard Cherry MX switch is typically a 2mm of pre-travel with 4mm total travel. So the shorter stroke means faster actuation. Paired with the relatively lightweight actuation force, the LP85 makes typing smooth and easy. 
almost too easy. I find myself making a few more mistakes and errors when typing on the LP85 compared to my drop alt with Gateron brown switches, but I'm very used to that setup in that keyboard. Switch feel is something that's very personal to, you know, all different types of users. That's why we have linear, tactile, and clicky switches with a huge variety of actuation forces as well. For me personally, uh, like I said, I have the Gateron browns in my drop alt, so I kind of like a lighter, tactile switch. But because of the low profile nature of the Vistle's LP85, I personally personally would have preferred a bit more actuation force on these switches. But that's my take on them, and they're definitely easy to type on with a very audible, sharp click. Love it or hate it. And here we'll do a sound test of the Vistle's LP85, and then I'll also compare it to my Drop Alt with Gateron Browns, and then we'll also check out the Vistle's V84, which has a linear switch in it, so you can hear a variety of switches. There isn't much information about where the switches are from, but they do sound and feel good for the price with smooth actuation and the satisfying click. Unlike most mechanical keyboards, uh, Vistles doesn't want you removing the keycaps at all on the LP85. Because they're the special low profile shape, you can maybe mess them up if you pop them off of there. They are made of a pretty standard ABS material and they have a nice and clean font that shines brightly with RGB and is very easy to read. Reading the comments on the Kickstarter project, there is some backlash on the labeling of the layout. On both the Windows and Mac layouts, there are those four different keys down here in the bottom left. For the Windows version, these are labeled from left to right as Control, Windows, Function, and Alt, which tracks pretty similarly to standard full-size layouts with the addition of the Function key. Where things start to get a little bit weird, though, is on the Mac OS version. The standard Apple Magic Keyboard has the layout from left to right of Function, Control, Option, and Command, and this is the same on my MacBook Pro as well. On the Vistles, though, the Mac OS layout has Control, Option, Function, and then Command. So for some reason, they put function in between option and command rather than all the way on the left. And quite a few people brought this up in the comments on the Kickstarter and asked, you know, are you going to change this? And in response to these comments, Vistles has stated that the design is set and they will not be changing the layout for this keyboard, but will perhaps make changes to a future model. They also didn't really say why they made this decision, which makes me just wonder if it was a mistake in the first place. As you can see here, I have the Windows version of the keyboard. I don't have the Mac version, uh, so I didn't see that deviation down there in the bottom left, but I can totally understand why people are, you know, a little bit upset about that and kind of curious as to why Vistles doesn't just change it. You know, I'm sure that they've placed the order for a bunch of their product and it's already coming in, but that seems like a pretty big design choice there or perhaps a mistake, and it's a little surprising that they aren't going to change it. And one other thing on the layout of this keyboard, because of the size of the keys in the lower left corner, the spacebar is shorter than most keyboards, which also took some getting used to for me. The alt key is positioned further right than I'm usually used to. I use plenty of hotkeys when editing in Premiere Pro, and the change to the positioning of the Alt key threw me for a loop the first few times using it, but I did quickly become adjusted to this layout. And one other big thing that sets the Vistle's LP85 apart from something like the Apple Magic Keyboard is the inclusion of per-key RGB on here. So plenty of lighting in here if you want to turn this on and have a brighter setup. It's easy to select between 19 different dynamic lighting modes, and even select 7 different monochrome effects throughout those different modes. So at that early bird price of $99, who's the Vistle's LP85 for? I'd say that it's for those who are maybe bored by the standard Apple Magic keyboard and want something a little bit different. 
The clicky optical switches offer a very unique experience that is quite a bit different than the standard Apple version. Personally, I love the full-size arrow keys down here. Obviously, that's something that I'm used to on the mechanical keyboards that I typically use, and then also the included navigation keys here along the right side. You know, the rest of the keyboard feels very well built. You know, the ability to connect up to three devices via Bluetooth is very handy, and the keyboard itself just feels very sturdy and very well built. You know, it feels like it's something that's gonna that's gonna last a long time. Well, and that'll do it for our review of the Vissels LP85. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments. Does that layout throw you for a loop or is you know the design and the style something that you really want to pick up? Let us know your thoughts. And thank you very much for watching 9to5toys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.